Okay, well, welcome back to um, abstract part two. Um, one interesting um, thought that uh, one of my Zoom participants um, asked, um, a question that she asked was um, about uh, when, when we were creating um, the Matisse style image was um, the, the white lines that were left, were they made from cutting out more of the blue or by moving it apart? more and to be honest it was a bit of both so um, I, I cut it out from the blue pieces of paper without taking out extra bits uh, laid them down moved them apart very slightly but then went picked them back up and and then tidied them up a little bit cut off some of those black marks that you that were left by the carbon paper and um, and just taking off an, uh, just a millimetre or so often gives it enough of a gap for you to get those white lines coming through. So it's a little bit of both, of trimming the paper very, very slightly um, and also just moving them apart a little bit. OK, so now we're going to be uh, looking at um, and inspired by, but it doesn't have to be a direct copy, it's up to you what you do with it, um, the artist Brack, which um, is again sort of just semi abstracted and looking really towards cubism and um, and a, a form of still life. And um, I haven't actually got any images of um, guitars and things, but this is obviously looking at sort of cafe life that, that they spent a lot of time in bars. Um, so, you know, we have images of, of pots and jars and um, mugs, the music they were listening to, um, there's another image here, you can see the, the lines of, you know, violins and things put, put in here. And so this is an example that I've already made. And we're using uh, just plain white paper background, if you wanted to use a coloured background, you're more than welcome to. Um, and then I've chosen a couple of um, different shades of paper. Um, this is um, just the, 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 the sort of quite cheap and rough sugar paper here. Uh, you're going to need a pencil and um, if you want to draw freehand some images then that's absolutely fine because as you can see they're, they're hardly overly realistic if you wanted to draw guitars and like that. But um, you can also trace um, some you know, still life images um, if that's a little bit easier for you, no problem. So how I've started this was I took some paper and uh, sort of cut out some fairly random shapes. Now, so that I'm just not repeating myself again, I'm going to, this time, as you can see, that this is um, sort of reflects this image slightly more the blocks I'm going to sort of do something more like this where you've got the color is centralized more the paper is centralized so I'm going to cut out or tear I think I'm going to tear it doesn't matter if you tear the paper or cut it um, I quite like the roughness of, of the tear but entirely up to you and it's just random shapes don't overthink it too much just tear out some effectively just some blocks of colour and they don't have to be completely square this what this piece of paper has a has a, a fold in it I'm just going to go with that if you if you find that you you're overthinking it you could literally just take a piece of a paper like this and fold it into random random pieces so that you get some random shapes if, you're, if you feel like you're overthinking things too much so I'm just going to place I'll go to it landscape instead of portrait for change so put, put some paper down there I'm going to tear out a few other pieces place them down you can work back into uh, back into them. Um, uh, I put down the this piece, this piece, and this piece first, and then when after I'd started drawing, decided to tear out another piece to go over the top. So you can layer things up. Um, 
these were pieces of paper that were put on afterwards after I'd done a bit of drawing. So I think that's all right. I think I might put one more piece just overlapping up here. gluing your pieces of paper down I'm just using a fit stick because I happen to have it at hand um, you can the PVA glue that you've got in your art pack is fine to use um, I find it easiest to use a paintbrush for, for applying it So that's a, a, a base uh, of collage now. If you want to use much brighter colours, that's absolutely fine. Um, the, um, the Cubists uh, they tend to use quite muted colours. They like their browns and beiges, um, which I've, I've used for this. But um, if you want to use something that's brighter, that's absolutely fine. Um, next, I'm going to trace some still life things onto it. Um, so for this one, I literally just traced the um, wine glass and the, the bottle of wine, as you can see. Just took the basic outlines and just put in a little bit of um, the uh, where there were shadows. Okay. So for this one, um, I'm going to use a few different different ones. Going to use put the big one in the centre. I think doesn't have to be too precise. I'm happy where it is. That will do. And I'm going to use a biro to trace the outside shape. I think I'll put in this glass at the front as well. the outline and I'm going to put a line in where the the light and the shadow hits See this mark here? That's because I got a little bit of glue stuck on it, and it's um, from the carbon paper. No, never mind. These things happen. And I think I'm going to put in a few extra pieces. Um, um, look, I think I'm going to put another glass. I'm going to put glass as if it's up here, as if that was a little shelf up there. So, in approximately the right kind of place. 
Obviously you can do it freehand as well, you don't have to trace. You do get quite a nice dark outline though with um, the carbon paper. We've got the cups there, and I'm also going to put in a few random lines. They um, just to, to break the image up. Just grab, grab my ruler. Okay, so I'm using a pencil now. I'm going to put some random lines up here, across like that. And one line that stops and it hits that piece of paper. So what you're thinking of, sometimes you know, your drawing will go over the top of the collage and sometimes it will go behind the collage. There's no right or wrong, it's just sort of playing around with it a little bit. And um, I think I might put in one more glass. I'm going to put that glass right at the top, um, as if this was a shelf here. So, put the glass there, get that underneath it, yeah. and draw that shape of the glass. Remember, we're not going for realism here. Now, uh, I'm going to put a little bit of shading in. So I'm going to do the, uh, the main glass bottle first. And I'm going to shade one side of it, which is where it was quite dark. A little shadow on that bit there. Now, when you're shading in with a pencil, if you need it to be very dark, then hold it closer to the bottom, to the, to the lead because you can put on put a lot more pressure on it um, and control it and it's just if you, the darker you want it more pressure plenty of backwards and forwards now if you if you want it to be paler if you want it um, much paler sh shading then hold it further back along here because then you, it prevents you from putting too much pressure on and what you want to do is just is put on a very light amount of pressure and then to darken it up you just keep going over it until it's it's hit the um the the shade that you want the tone that you want now as you can see there was light here where it was hitting i'm now going to reverse it and turn this little bit really dark Um, that bit dark and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade up the glass bottle but I'm going to stop where it hits that piece of paper so um, use um, use the collage to help break up where you are shading as well and putting detail in I'm going to gradually build up the tone, keeping it dark at the bottom and then lighter towards the centre as if it was a real bottle and um, curved so the light would be hitting in a different part. A bit of shading in here. Um, it is just playing around. It's kind of like colouring in little bits, putting in details here and there, but it's entirely up to you where you do your shading. And then here I'm going to shade behind. Now I'm actually drawing on top of a wooden table and the paper isn't too thick and actually the texture of the wood 
is coming through you can see the lines you can see the lines of the wood and that's i really like that actually i think that's quite a good effect it, it works well with the idea of the cafe and the rustic tables they would have worked at i'm keeping all this fairly dark particularly behind the bottle shading up here and I tend to the my style when I when I work I tend to jump around quite a bit I'll, I'll um, sort of start working on one bit and then think oh actually I'd like to, to do something up here it's just the way I happen to work um, some people prefer to, to complete one particular part of the, the drawing first but I quite like to play around with one bit and then jump to another bit and then come back dark shading behind now the shading doesn't have to go anywhere it can literally just stop if you see here I, you know I've started shading and then it's just stopped and here I did a little bit of shading and it just stopped and there a little bit of shading it just stopped because I'm just emulating the, the style of the, the black images where those there's random bits of shading not necessarily you know denoting anything in particular it's just put it in so you can just play play around with that but do try and get some of those tones in it, it makes it's quite a nice effect so you know go dark to light dark to light dark to light like that okay now um they they used quite a lot of type in um uh, in their work so um a, a good plan would be to find some type to copy you can either literally stick it on which is what i did here i literally just cut that out of the paper and stuck it on but this one i traced so you get uh, a more naturalistic um printed style and just up there again i've written it's um quite um pale so you can do it dark or pale it's nice to, to mix it up quite a bit so um pretty random what what you want to you know you might find um you just choose a um uh, a typeface that you like the look of it might actually have something to do with um with the image um, it just happened that I managed to find something that said Adnams on it. And all this type here was from the same uh, article. It was about a, um, a hotel and pub. So let's have a look. Uh, turmoil. I'm going to cut out the word turmoil. No particular reason why, I just thought I'll... And you've got to choose something quickly. There we go. And um, I can, I've got, I may, need to make a decision. Do I just actually t stick that on, or do I trace it? I, I quite like the colour of the of the paper, so I might actually um, just. Just stick it down rather than trace that one just moving it around because I haven't quite decided where I want it to go I might not stick it down till later I might change my mind okay so right I'm just going to trace a bit so I need to find another thin type face This is completely random. I mean, as you can see on here, bar, ale, it's 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 fairly relevant. I'm not going for relevant today because I haven't got time to, to trawl through the paper. 
but um, I've decided I'm going to trace off the word 30th and let's find somewhere fairly random for that to go. I put it up here. So place that down and then literally I'm just tracing over the top of it with the carbon paper. Typeface is quite difficult to do freehand so you either want to just cut it out and stick it on or you want to trace it unless you're an old-fashioned typographer It's quite nice if you happen to have any um, sort of music um, paper hanging around, you know, music manuscript, that would look quite nice stuck on. Okay, got a bit of type just very randomly placed up there. And I think I will colour in, well, shade this bit. See, I'm working quite fast, I'm not being overly careful. You probably want to take your time a little bit more. And I think I'll get allow it to get paler as it gets down towards the bottom. Like that. And then where it shifts to a different piece of paper, then change to that. And again. Where the paper marks an edge, I'm going to go from dark to light, like that. Um, so you can also just cut out some pieces of uh, paper to stick down, as I did here. It's just random bits of type. So I'm going to cut a piece out. And then just play with it and see if there's somewhere that I think it could go. I might think of trying to find something maybe to cover up my bit of black there. It didn't quite work. Do is I'll do it from here to there, sort of reflecting that edge there and this edge here. Just playing around here. Yep. I'll go back to doing some more shading for a minute. Um, another, put in another random line.
So the idea is that whenever you, you know, whenever you hit a different piece of paper, then change what it, what it is you're doing. And that's quite a good way of um, forcing yourself to do something different. It breaks it up, prevents it from being realistic. Pale to dark, I think, because we went from light to dark. We're going to go light to dark again. Uh, head pushing down that wood is coming through again it's um if you have anything to hand that has um, texture to it that would be a really good thing to try you know to work over the top of it's like um frottage frottage is the official name for it for rubbing you're making a rubbing if you've got anything that's 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 got a good texture to it that will make for an interesting sort of shaded background But you don't have to always just shade the object itself. You can just shade behind the object in the negative space, which then doesn't become negative space. The whole point of this of um, this style is that the, the whole thing is part of the image, all of the space. I haven't decided where to put that yet. There. There. I can't decide. Maybe I'll just have to wait till the end. Until we've done more before we can decide. Okay, so I'm going to find my black picture. Come back to that. Have a look. See, see what else I could be inspired by from his work. As you can see, you've got you've got more type there, which is pretty cool. Um, you can also draw in some things that, um, uh, like here, we've got the the, the idea of the grapes. We've got a little a pale bit of type just here. Sorry, that was there the grapes here. Okay, so um, I think I might for something that um, is just hand drawn and um, because it's it's not been drawn using the carbon paper it will be much paler Um, what you need to remember is, is to try and be quite playful with it. And I 
think I'd quite like to put another bit of type maybe up here. Um, right, I'm going to leave it quite small. Let's see what I can find. I'm going to put it over what I've already drawn. So I'm going to just finish off this little bit of drawing. Like so maybe one last one. So you just get the vague idea of cups and things up here. So I've cut out 4.5 million for some random reason. Uh, where should I put it? I'll put it here. Uh, I'm going to use the carbon paper again. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just trying to put less pressure on so that it will come through paler. Um, you can't guarantee how it's going to come out, obviously, but the pretty much less pressure that the um, lighter it will be, but still far more distinct than if it was from just normal pencil. There you go. So you get the hint of it there. I think I probably need to do something with this cup. And shade in this bit here. And I'll probably think about putting something over here maybe. I think I might put in some some grapes by hand over here. Quite loose. A little bit of shading in between. Not meant to look realistic. Slightly more graphic. Maybe as if it was on a bowl.
jump in. I'm just going to play around with a few things. Um, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm just going to cut out the shape of the grape just in the typeface. In some type print, should I say. And see what that looks like. Okay, I'm not going to stick anything down till I've finished. Just in case I change my mind. Just cut it out so that that one, that grape looks like it's in front of this grape. Put a little bit more shade on that to bring it forward. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe put, mix them up a little bit. Put. Another real one behind, uh, real one, another drawn one behind. this colour paper. Um, as I said, it, you can um, use whatever colour, you know, any paper you want. You could put in lots of different colours. Um, I've kind of limited it to just a white background, these two, with a bit of print, because it, it could get lost quite easily. But um, as I said, you can do whatever you feel like. It, it, you could end up being very psychedelic if you added a lot of different colours. If I just trim that as if it was behind, can place it there and then draw the shapes on so I know I've cut. I'm going to continue playing with it. So I'm going to pause this um, recording for a minute um, whilst I continue playing with my bits of paper and um, and then come back to it um, to see to see it when it's almost finished. So just to finish off, I decided to put a bit of um, uh, uh, print paper um, underneath here. So I cut it to the to the shape I wanted, and then I couldn't decide how to, to cut this end off or what to do with this end. So I just happened to um, fold it under so I could get an idea of where I wanted it to stop without actually cutting it and realise that this grey actually works really well. And a happy accident, really. I decided to keep it like that. So I'm keeping this folded bit there. And, um, and that's one of the nice things about art, really, is that um, you just fiddle and play around with things and, and sometimes something comes out of it. So that will be glued down there and then some of the little pieces of paper that I um, was, was cutting out, um, this, these are just the remnants, I thought oh I might keep those as well and put those on. So they're just little little bits that were left over from when I was trimming out um, the, uh, um, the little grapes and I'm actually going to keep those and stick those there. So that's um, my back inspired um, still life. Uh, certainly recommend um, if you you know if you actually have um, some old an old book or some old paper, um, music manuscripts they they look really effective um, uh, placed placed down as well. Okay, right. Thanks for watching. 
if you uh, create something that you are particularly proud of and would like to share with everybody else then please do uh, send them over to me on my email address kirstjoleary at outlook.com and I will eventually get around to adding everybody's work onto the gallery of the website www.creativehealthathome.com Thanks very much. <laughs>